Greetings and welcome to the Prime Directive. I'm your host, Jeff Ico, and my co-host today is Sean. Say hi, Sean. Hey, hey. Um, so, we're going to talk about some Sequest today. Yeah, we are. Sequest DSV. What does the DSV stand for? Deep Submersical... Oh. Submersical. <laughs> Submersical Vehicle. Yeah. Submersive. You, Submersive. you knew it. I knew it. I'll give you the point. Yeah. What are your thoughts on Sequest? I loved the show as a kid because that's how old I was when it came out. Uh, and of course, yeah, it was like we we're talking about Spielberg helped produce it, so it was like right on the heels of Jurassic Park. You know, just like the CGI thing was happening. It was just really exciting TV, I thought, at 10 years old, whatever it was. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned Jurassic Park because like those dinosaurs look real, but Sequest still kind of looked Babylon 5. Well, you know, it had Mumbari. Hull skin, because yes. that's what you did in the year well, 2018. Know, it, it had to be underwater, <laughs> it had to absorb hits. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, there's a difference between movie CGI and television CGI. Yeah, we're still trying to work out the bugs here, okay, come yeah. on. Just, they didn't have six months to like work on post-CGI practices. Exactly, exactly. So be kind when you review the show. Yeah. yeah. enjoyed the differences to this. It felt a bit like Stargate, which is hilarious because the guys that read, did this later did Stargate. I really enjoyed the fact that like everything was just underwater and you're getting all these different things, like all these mm -hmm. civilizations that actually like, you know, started up these programs and they're doing mining under there and vegetable growth. And yeah. there was even this episode, which I thought was pretty funny in season two, um, the Miranda colony, which was the same thing in Serenity, where basically they were like all peaceful, and then like this virus happened, they all turned into killers, which in Serenity they turned into the Ravagers. Mm. I was like, pretty much just stole from this episode. Good yeah. work, Josh Whedon. <laughs> well, sci-fi, we borrow from everywhere and steal when needed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, no, this episode starts out with uh, a warship with uh, Captain Stark, and uh, she's causing some shits, but uh, Commander Jonathan Ford takes over and kicks her out of the chair. That's right. When you don't know who anybody is, he makes this bold move, and you're like, that was good, I guess? Yeah. Because she not Characters good? Characters I don't know. Yeah. Good job. Captain Stark, under Article 20, Section 8 of NORPAC Command Regulations, I'm relieving you of command. But yeah, I'm in, I'm in favor of this, sure. Well, he's he's clearly an important character because he comes uh, first officer in the Sequest. Mm -hmm. uh, 13 months later, they're at the UEO training base mm -hmm. and they're doing a refit on it. What does UEO stand for? Um, unidentified <laughs> <laughs> Educational <laughs> Optimism. <laughs> uh, that is correct. Yeah. <laughs> United Earth something. Oceans Organization. Oceans. Yeah. There's two O's. They only use one. Hammered out a peace treaty. The United Earth Oceans Organization was formed to administer. It's different out there now. There's farms and colonies, families. UEO needed a way to maintain the situation. That's why NORPAC gave us the sequest. So we get the Admiral, who's a recognizable actor, and he's the plan to get the, the captain of the ship. What is that plan? <laughs> it's a great plan. Essentially kidnapping and then showing the first officer to be so incompetent that he has to take him out of the ship. Yeah, that works. Where do they find a captain? The captain is played by Roy Snyder, who doesn't like the water after Jaws. That's right. But now he loves the water. He's always in the water. He's got his own pet dolphin. Yeah. Who we just found out is not even real. You know, I was wondering, like, wildlife associates would just be, like, totally against this. Because, I mean, they dressed the dolphin up a few times with, like, a life jacket and all this stuff. I'm just like, how are they getting away with this? They fired him out of a torpedo tube. <laughs> hey, he just swam fast, okay? Okay. But no, he was totally animatronic. It's amazing. Yeah, I thought I legit thought it was a real dolphin. Yeah. Even when he was talking. <laughs> Darwin Lavisher. North Swords Skin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how the captain likes to swim. Darwin. What's the color of my favorite bathing suit? North Swords Skin. He's right. I don't wear a suit. Thanks for painting that picture for us. We get introduced to most of the uh, crew here. Um, I thought the doctor was really good. Um, she was to totally just 
experienced actress um, to just yep. fit the role. Like every everybody just kind of yeah. fit their roles properly. She was a good foil for for uh, Nathan Bridger at the beginning, and yeah. Uh, yeah, became a good love interest. And I was very disappointed she just disappeared after that first like season. Half the friggin' cast from the first season. Yeah. <laughs> Especially like with Lieutenant Commander Hitchcock, like yes. Hitchcock. Miss, I miss her. <laughs> we all, we all miss her. <laughs> Lucas misses her the most. <laughs> yeah, sadly, Jonathan Brandis was Lucas, and uh, he's no longer with us. Um, yeah. yeah. But he had a good series here. <laughs> yeah, he was one of the only ones who stayed the whole show. I think only like three actors survived all three seasons. He actually well. like he was a civilian in the first two seasons, and he actually had to enlist to stay on the ship for the third season. Michael Irons had such a hard ass. Yeah. yeah, this is a military ship. No, it's supposed to be about science and exploration. Damn it! He's like, do I have to cut my hair? And he's like, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you never saw a uniform before. Even uh, Nathan cuts his hair, he shaves his beard off. He was all like, you know, retirement, Nathan Bridger. And now he's like, oh, mm -hmm. even though I'm not taking command and I'm just going for a tour, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll do this. <laughs> um, he gets to go, he gets his own little ship quarters and mm -hmm. they got this cool holographic thing with this like old doctor kind of dude, professor. Yeah. What's your mission? I'm a hologram here to provide a sounding board in times of moral or ethical conflict. Very good. Was a uh, artificial intelligence he designed or something? Yeah, so. yeah. So it basically was his bartender whenever he had trouble, and he's just like, "Hey, computer, what should I do?" I know he was just slamming the admiral a second ago and his plan to keep Bridger on the ship, but I guess the whole point of it was if I if I leave him stranded on the ship that he designed and, and put so much hard work into that he'd eventually have to stay because he you know fell in love with it again. So I guess it did work. But. Well, he also did some changes. I mean, Nathan left because it was a military ship and now they've put all this like money and like research area in there. So it could right. be a science ship as well. Right. And it, it basically, it's kind of what I want to see from a Star Trek episode or series where uh, the ship's going around just helping people out and dealing with things like in the, in the area rather than just out and exploring the unknown all the time. Yeah, and it's a great concept in that they could deal with literally terrestrial issues, you know, like food or territory or something that just involved Earth. So that was a kind of a neat part of the show that they kind of explored in the, in the first season and the second season, but then it kind of got pushed away when they went more into a military viewpoint. But. Yeah, and and the unknown. There's a lot of the unknown. Mm -hmm. Charlton Heston showing up and he's like, <laughs> made people into gills, and give, give, giving people gills so they could live underwater. <laughs> well, you know, sci-fi. Yeah. yeah, there's some sexy outfits in that episode, Sean. Yes, just saying. Hitchcock. That's where we went. What? Hitchcock? Yeah. <laughs> Catherine Hitchcock, Chief Engineer. This is Nathan Bridger. Captain Nathan Bridger. How do you do? It's a pleasure, sir. We head off to Jamaica where we get some bad guy speech where the guy's just like, all right, we got to get rid of Sequest. I want my ocean back. And then she actually shows you a graphic of like how much she was actually taking over the ocean with his little like projects. And then Sequest shows up and is like, I've lost a lot of these. So he hires Captain Stark, you know, who was a bad girl <laughs> yeah and she didn't change at all like it's been two years or 13 months or something and it's just like come on like give her a different look we're gonna call her Janeway under the sea yeah she pretty much was <laughs> yeah but she knew Nathan Nathan actually sponsored her in uh, the military academy there mm -hmm. and so she like she's a good foil for him because she knew his tactics it's close to home but when you know they know your plan you sh you just change that so you just have to know what you think you know they know your plan or something yeah yeah when they do get a in a confrontation they just you know take the sequest and use all its advantages of being like hey we can go like seventeen thousand feet deep and you can't in your warrior class submarine <laughs> We got all these different names for submarines in the show, but like they all just look like regular submarines. <laughs> Whisper data coming in. Five class C shooter sub. One typhoon class delta four. It's the future, you know? Yeah. Some are exploration, some are military, and some are just for fishing. Yeah. <laughs> um, they try to they try to lure the sequest out of their little deep dives and uh, you know, start attacking civilians in their mm. little colonies. There's so many cool colonies under the water. Oh, 
eventually. I mean, Sequest just yeah. outmatched anything under the water. It's huge. It has so much weaponry, but it's there for friendly exploration as well. That's right. As long as we can blow up anything that gets in our way, we'll be peaceful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a good relationship between Nathan and Lucas that kind of develops. Um, it only starts in this one, but it develops throughout the series because he lost his son and his mm -hmm. wife, mm -hmm. like, after. And Lucas's daddy always be busy. Yeah. Except, like, when he's trying to save the world at the end of season one, and so they have to basically fly or swim, I don't know, drive the ship into something. <laughs> <laughs> something water. Move the sequest. Yeah. It's confusing. Yeah. And um, that's how they destroy the sequest in the first season. This yeah. is like, this was a bit rushed. But guys. it's okay, because we have another one that we just have kicking around yeah, for season gonna, two. We're going to build a second one for season two. Yeah. But, yeah, it is how it is. So. But, yeah, they try to develop the father son dynamic. It's like you're saying, they both were in need of of that but uh yeah it was one of the better parts of the, of the show for sure and it's really weird like when season three starts and it's just like oh apparently my son was alive out there somewhere and he had a kid so <sighs> i'm leaving yeah Here well, you go, michael ironside <laughs> it's been pretty documented like uh on online about how the cast just seemed to you know get to fight with the producers and the writers and stuff so they had to keep coming up with reasons why they're leaving or coming back i think it, i think shiner didn't even want to come back for the third season at all and they kind of you know begged him or demanded or gave him a bunch of money and so it was this weird kind of uh agreement i guess but well i mean i know we're really jumping out of the pile here but there's not too much to talk about they, <laughs> they, they, they introduced the characters and i will say in this pilot they do a better job like introducing the characters than the first two seasons of discovery <laughs> i'm sorry Kristen westphal medical doctor physical oceanographer and head of the science team aboard this uh, ship doctor what is it, the end of uh, season two? Mark Hamill is this like, established character who's this alien from another world, and he takes them to an alien planet where they have to deal with the war there. And that's where season two ends. I'm just like, huh, how do they get back to Earth in season three? They just randomly appear. This happens all the time in the Navy, honestly. Yeah. You, know, you end up on, you know, some alien Five planet. years goes by, Sequest yeah. randomly appears in a field, yeah. and then, uh, you know, all the characters have an age because no time has passed for them. And my son is alive. And yeah. My son is alive. It's a soap opera. Now, now I must leave the show. Um, yeah. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about the glory years of the pilot. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good pilot, honestly. Yeah. Um, first season was really good. Propulsion. One quarter normal. Weapons. Still no weapons or targeting. Send coordinates to navigation. Plot a course. Speak to me, Mr. O'Neill. So yeah, really, that's all that happens in the ship is um, Stark gets her little submarine and she tries to take down Sequest and she tries to take down the farm and then she tries to take down Sequest again, but again, she's outmatched, so she basically loses and the bad guy doesn't get what he wants. Right. So it really just, this episode establishes all the characters and kind of the world building. Yep, and gives Bridger a reason to stay on the ship, basically. Yeah. Any uh, <laughs> final thoughts? Um... On this and or Sequest overall. <laughs> Just that the show uh, overall had really good potential, and it's just too bad, like I was referring to earlier, that, you know, uh, things got really dicey and it just kind of turned into, you know, just a random monster of the week or, you know, issue of the week. It didn't really stick to the, the Star Trek Under the Sea thing, which is, I think, what they started out to be. Uh, but, uh, yeah, overall, I liked the pilot, and I liked the first season, and after the second season, it starts to turn into something else, and it's just too bad. So. Yeah, I agree. Um, first season had so many like cool things where you could just go anywhere. I thought it was really ballsy. Like the fourth episode, they did like a Halloween episode, which is like a haunted ship. And I was like, man, like this isn't bad, and it's really ballsy to do in your first season of a whole new established show to do these kind of things. Would the captain like to take the helm? Well, I think you can handle that, Commander. Hey. Oh, boy. No, overall, I really enjoyed it. Um, so I would say go back and watch some Sequest, guys. Yeah, it's got Vorlon skin. Come yeah, on. It totally does. And what else are you doing? It's good. Yeah, Just watch it. First, you know? first season, pretty enjoyable. Look how 2018 should have been, okay? Yeah. Because that's the first year of, <laughs> of Sequest is in 2018. So disappointing. We're so far behind that we haven't spent $500 billion on a underwater exploration device. Yeah. Do, we, do we have any crops growing under the ocean? I don't think no. so. Maybe we have not little. colonized the last great place on Earth. <laughs> I mean, they'd just probably be like uh, moving through plastic constantly in the water, but... It's true. 
It is a sad state we're in right now. That's the one thing I really liked about Aquaman when they started that war. So they just threw all the shit on the on the shores. I'm just like, we well, deserve that. <laughs> That's probably a good idea. Maybe we could fire it off in space, and that can be a problem a hundred years from now. Space throws it all back. So to take you out of this depression we've given you, watch Sequest. Yeah. That's how things should have been. <laughs> exactly. Well, as always, thanks for watching. Bye.